Hi, Mr. Devlin here, and today I want to talk about the old features we'd love to see the return of in Battlefield 2018. A closer look at older Battlefield features that could boost the competitive viability of Battlefield in 2018. It's tricky to speculate about the competitive viability of Battlefield 2018 when we don't even know which year it is set in. Allegedly. Depending on which rumour mill you subscribe to, the loudest rumblings are that it's either Vietnam War era, bad company sequel, or the return to World War II. It's probably going to be World War II. In terms of available military hardware and warring factions, those eras aren't exactly interchangeable. Instead, I've been looking into some of the older parts of Battlefield War Machine to discover closer to home franchise features that could help lift the competitive potential of Battlefield 2018. Starting with Battlefield 1942, DICE should consider better class delineation. In the past, this has meant more than four core classes that have been standard since a bad company days. Good medic, bad medic. For Battlefield 1, one of the most glaring utility flaws was a design decision to give medics grenade launchers for one of their equipment slots. This means a medic is forced to switch out a reviving syringe or healing medic kit crate for a versatile explosive option. In short, DICE was asking players to pick between playing the role of a good medic, a healer, or a bad medic, one who prioritises frags over healing. It's a kit selection foobar that will hopefully be rectified in Battlefield 2018. On the topic of healing, it'd be nice for Battlefield 2018 to return to treating health as something that doesn't regenerate to further emphasise the importance of that role. That a good medic plays. Get to the chopper. Even if Battlefield 2018 doesn't turn out to be a Vietnam War era based bad company spin off, and the signs are pointing to more a World War II theme than Vietnam. Hopefully, DICE is leaning into the Battlefield Vietnam asymmetrical nature of the factions. Battlefield 1 featured factions who only points of difference are cosmetic. Granted, this makes a balancing more straightforward, but it also restricts the depths of strategy required to master their strengths and weaknesses of each respective asymmetrical faction. If Battlefield 2018 is going to be set in Vietnam, or at a time when military helicopters exist, it'd be great to also reintroduce the vehicle airlifting mechanic from Battlefield Vietnam. This is a risk-reward mechanic wherein Players can chance shifting their team's ground vehicles to unpredictable or flanking positions, but would also run the risk of losing both helicopter and attached vehicles. Keen Commander One of the better features of Battlefield 2, which was reintroduced for Battlefield 4, is the Commander role. In fairness, the Battlefield 4 reintroduction of this role was at a time when second grip screen systems were all the rage which is why he's felt more like a companion app than a full-fledged role. Additionally, the Battlefield 2 Commander was also present on the battlefield, which meant they had to hide and the enemy team could prioritise removing the Commander from the field itself. While I don't personally mind that the Commander wasn't an actual player in Battlefield 4, this role played expertly offers a team a viable competitive edge. In a competitive sense for Battlefield 2018, it could also be a role that's played by a team coach, even if they only had an overview of the map, which would be a great way to have coaches more actively involved in matches. In terms of other Battlefield 2 features, it'd also be great to see the return of grappling hooks and zip lines, if the era allows for that of course which were in the Special Forces expansion to enhance verticality and to create new flanking routes and firing lines. The big one though, which is reflected across multiple Battlefield games, is the importance of a more competitive game mode. Conquest has been the standard Battlefield mode since day dot, but while it replicates a multi-front battle, it's not a competitively viable mode. 
This is why Battlefield Incursions, the specific competitive mode built into Battlefield 1 bases, has created at least one hybrid mode, not to mention drop the player count to 5v5. In an age where player unknowns battlegrounds, a hundred player fight to the last player duo squad, standing has a competitive scene. Hopefully DICE is eager to look at the creation of a larger scale competitive mode beyond squad v squad. A 32 or even a 64 player mode doesn't have to be immediately ruled out. And there have been some solid conquest alternatives in Battlefield history that could easily slot into Battlefield 2018. Remember the Titans? Titan mode from Battlefield 2142, later replicated in Battlefield 3's na Naval Strike DLC as Carrier Assault, is one such conquest alternative that does a better job of focusing action around a specific point in an offence defence mode. Rush from the Bad Company Games is another solid competitive option that focuses on fights around two points. As the attackers plant bombs, the defenders have to defuse. If the bombs on both sides are defused, the defenders are forced back to a deeper section of the map. And the process repeats until all attacking tickets are depleted or the attackers successfully detonate the charge on the final objective. On the topic of tickets, let's get controversial for a moment. DICE originally planned to have Battlefield 1's tickets only influenced positively or negatively by how many points a team held. Kills had no impact on ticket bleed. This was a fantastic idea that DICE renegade on because of complaining fans, assumedly the ones who don't like playing objectives and prefer farming kills. I say this as someone who played what DICE originally intended for Battlefield 1 and it was great. If anything, it made Conquest more of a competitively viable mode because it concentrated on fighting around objectives, especially the middle ones. A link to the past. Back to mode alternatives. The second Assault DLC for Battlefield 3 presented a basic two flag capture the flag mode that, again, concentrated fighting over specific objectives, boosting Battlefield 3's competitive viability outside the mayhem of conquest. Additionally, the Dragon's Teeth DLC introduced a chain link mode that was the most promising conquest alternative to date. In chain link, teams are incentivized to capture points in order, which pushes fighting towards a central point. Reminiscent of enemy territory, one of the original team-based esports. The cool twist of Chainlink is teams are incentivized to capture points be behind enemy lines to stop the flow of points stroke tickets that require each point to be connected back to their spawn. It's the equivalent of disrupting a supply chain by capturing a behind enemy lines region in Company of Heroes. The reward is obvious, but the risk you're taking players away from the core contest over the central point. Risk reward mechanics improve the tension and, therefore, the competitive viability of any game. Battlefield 1 emphasizes the importance of engagement rages matched to specific classes, and I hope that that continues with Battlefield 2018. The universal weapons category, outside of pistols and knives, of Bad Company 2, for instance, should not return to the series because they promote lone wolf behaviour in a series that's fought hard to reward team play. Even in public matches, forcing players to play to the range of their kit's primary weapon is a smart move by DICE. Speaking of things to remove, the suppression mechanic needs an overhaul. Unlike certain fans, I don't think it should be moved completely, but it really should only apply to support players armed with LMGs or other classes with fully automatic weapons. For instance, a scout who scores a suppressive assist for missing a target is a participation award you can receive in Battlefield 1. If suppression is going to be part of Battlefield 2018, DICE also needs to ensure it works and throws off the aim of the suppressed enemies enough 
to incentivise players to use it as a viable tactic. Additionally, the so-called sweet spot mechanic for scouts, where scout rifles kill in one uh, torso shot at certain ranges, should disappear too. It's a casual friendly mechanic that has no place in Battlefield. Similarly, though a minor impact on their impact, the specialisations of Battlefield 1 should be ditched for any competitive mode to ensure fairness in health, movement, speed, damage, dishing and taking, and utility. What does have a place in Battlefield is destructibility, but it should return to bad company levels. Bad company famously offered 90% environmental destructibility, and while I can see why DICE doesn't want a completely flattened Battlefield, Bad Company 2 still has better macro destructibility than Battlefield 1. The macro destructibility means that maps feel different whenever they are played because destructibility becomes a line form of map editing that we can have massive consequences for teams hoping to repeat previously victorious tactics. That said, for surfaces that aren't destructible or penetrable, DICE needs to find a better way of visually flagging this so players know, at a glance, what can and can't be destroyed or shot through. In fairness, this was acknowledged by producer David Serland when he was interviewed about incursions. Hopefully, this Battlefield incursion visual design logic carries over to Battlefield 2018 too. The one mechanic I'd advise DICE to bring back from Battlefield Hardline is the option for players to manually take health and ammunition from intensive or otherwise busy medic and support players. In fairness, that's more for public matches where teammates are lax rather than the competitive scene where highly skilled teams are playing their roles properly and communicating clearly. As far as new or improved features go, DICE is hopefully integrating a better and more meaningful kill cam. The one in Battlefield 1 is more confusing than informative. DICE really should look at Counter-Strike for inspiration. Spectator tools out of the gate for Battlefield 2018 would also help show DICE's commitment to creating a competitive scene. I'd also like to see the introduction of Locational VoIP. VOIP, a fully customizable UI and better communication of the core and deeper mechanics to help players learn the basics. The good news for Daiso is that they mostly only need to have a look at their own portfolio for inspiration on how to improve the competitive viability of Battlefield 2018. Don't forget to like, subscribe, press the bell icon ticking so you get notifications of when we're posting new videos. And this is Mr. Devlin, out.